So this particular discussion is going to talk about how to translate between MARC and EAD. Um, one of the things that uh, you'll find if you work with MARC Edit and you click on the MARC Tools button is that the uh, marked EAD translation is conspicuously absent. Uh, this is probably a bit of an, o uh, an oversight of mine that I'll, I'll change um, here shortly. Um, because there is a translation available, but like all things EAD and Mark Edit, um, I consider these more templates than definitive translations. While they certainly um, utilize the um, the the specs as as, um, as far as I've seen them, um, one of the things that I found with EAD in terms of in the wild implementations is that they tend to be somewhat squishy, and that um, organizations or institutions tend to implement them in different ways. Uh, because of that, uh, I really do consider the EAD translations to be templates. Um, you can see that there is an EAD to mark here already. You can find a template for the um, mark to EAD translation by selecting the XML data path. And you'll see when you open this up that there are a lot of um, EAD, or there's a lot of uh, XSLT translations that are already defined that don't show up as being pre-configured in Mark Edit, and they're there really for, for users to go and use them as templates for creating other translations. The marked EAD one um, is right here, Mark 21 Slim to EAD, and if we open this file up, we'll see there's a couple of things that we need to do with it in order to make it work for our particular institution. Um, one of the things that we're going to see is that uh, the uh, we're going to need to set the um, pieces in the file description. Those aren't set for uh, for um, these may need to be updated um, for Northwest Digital Archives. They do. Um, you need to set your um, publication information. So you have your institution of note. Cause right now there's a placeholder um, for Oregon State University. Um, same thing down here for repository types. And then there's maybe just a handful of changes that you want to make along the way. For example, um, for the Northwest Digital Archives, if you have um, a uh, 300 uh, with a subfield F, that tends to need to be translated um, into an extent statement with a, uh, an, an encoding analog of 300 subfield A um, in order for it to be displayed correctly using their current um, XSLT style sheet. So, um, you know, it, just depending on what your, your local implementation or your consortial group implementation is, there may be some changes you have to make. Um, one of the things that you can do, so I took that template and I went ahead and made a updated version for um, a member of the Northwest Digital Archives. And I did a couple of things differently than, than are in the template. And, and quite possibly what I'll end up doing with the next update of Mark Edit is updating the template. Uh, one of the things I did is I added a script. So Mark Edit uh, the way Mark Edit works with um, XSLT translations, if you use the Mark, if you use the uh, Microsoft um, XSLT engine that comes with .NET, you can actually embed um, either Java, uh, JScript or VBScript um, functions into the uh, XSLT style sheet, and that's what I've done here. Um, I've set up a namespace for VBScript code, and I've created a small um, function that calculates current dates. Um, you'll also see that I've defined where the DTD is, lives. Um, the Northwest Digital Archives uses DTD um, validation. Um, something else to be aware of, here we have an imported style sheet. Um, these are for uh, tools that get used as part of the translation process. Um, when you're saving this version of the uh, XSLT for use, if you want to use it, if you want to use um, the uh, the current uh, style sheet here that's being imported, you're going to need to define the place where that uh, lives, or you're going to have to copy this into the Mark Edit XSLT directory. Generally, when I create new XSLTs, I, I just put them into the Mark Edit XSLT directory. Um, but I know for some people who maybe don't have access to the uh, to um, their uh, to the programs directory because the machines are locked down. Um, you can create uh, another folder somewhere that you do have access to. Go ahead and save the file there, but you're going to have to make a change to where this path points to so that it points to the, the path within the XSLT directory. 
um, you'll see that uh, there's been a few changes made here, changes made to the analog and whatnot, and then a few changes made down here. So that goes ahead and sets up the template. So the template's been created. So we have a template. Um, what we have here is we have a block of MARC files here. There are three of them. So when generating um, EAD files, generally you want to uh, have them um, a single record per file rather than um, a block of records in a, a single XML file. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to do we're going to do this where we're going to take this block record of mark records we're going to split them up so that the records exist in uh, so that you have an individual record per file and then we're going to batch process um, all of those mark records at one time so that they get translated to EAD. So we have to do one thing before we do with all that processing work and that is we have to actually tell Mark Edit where this file lives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first go ahead and open up the XSLT path here. I'm going to make a copy of this file and I am going to put it here. And so I'm because the program file because the program files um, path on this machine is locked down. I had to enter in my um, I had to enter in a code so that I could uh, copy into that directory. Um, so I've got it here now. So now it's in a place where MarkEdit can resolve the import path for the file um, that it wants to link to, um, and it lives in this this directory. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell MarkEdit that that file exists, and I'm going to make a translation for it. So I click on Mark Tools. Uh, files, um, edit XML function list, and I'm going to go ahead and click add. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this mark to EAD, and I'm going to type in the, the template name um, because that's the uh, the organization that this template really um, corresponds to. Um, I have to tell it where that template lives now, and so we just put it in the programs path. And so we go ahead and navigate to the programs path and select our file again that we just created. That's mine. And so now MarkEdit knows where that XSLT lives. We're going to tell it the original file format that we're starting with is in Mark. And we're going to finish with something other than Mark or Mark XML. And we're going to go ahead and leave it the XSLT engine as default, unless you've changed the default engine to Saxon, in which case you'll need to select um, MSXML. Um, if you're using something like a, a embedded script in the process. If not, use whichever one you want. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK. So now you'll see that in the list there's a marked EAD um, translation in there. When I close this, you'll see it shows up in the list. It's right there. That's great. Mark edit knows it exists. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this file and we're going to split it up. So we're going to use what's called mark split. We have tools, mark split. That's going to go ahead and open up this little utility here. What we do is we tell it where the source file is, and the source file is going to be this pro project file right here. We're going to give it a folder, and the folder is where we're going to split those files into. And so we're going to have to select where that folder is. And so if you're on Windows 7 like I do, that means finding your user uh, path. And so I'm going to go ahead and put it on the desktop. We call it EAD split and drag the thing into the folder here. And so I've got that created. My destination folder now has been defined. I'm going to tell it I want one record per file. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell it to process. It's going to ask me if I'd like to use the control field to name the file. I know that in these records that the 001 exists in every one of the, the uh, files that um, every one of the mark records I'm processing. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it yes and tell it that I would like to use the 001 to name all of my files. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK. And if I look inside this folder now, you'll see that there are three files. They're all named by the uh, data that was in the 001. It's been pulled out and used um, as a file name. All right. So from here, I've got my individual files. My uh, EAD, marked EAD translation has been registered with MarkEdit. So now all I have to do is I just have to process these records. Well, I don't want to process them one at a time. I want to process them all in mass. And so what we want to do is we want to use the tools 
and batch process records utility. And this opens up a new dialog box. Um, I'm going to tell it what the source directory is. It's this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and find my directory again. And so it's under my username, desktop, and EAD split. I'm going to tell it what file types I'm processing. And in this case, they're MRC. Uh, Mark Edit will just process the MRC files. So you could have as many files as you want in there. And it's only going to look at the MRC file types. Um, and that's what it's going to use to process. It's going to process three files. And then I'm going to pick from the function list. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the Mark to EAD translation. This is why I have to register it with Mark Edit ahead of time. So that Mark Edit knows that that function exists. And then I'm just going to go ahead and process the file. And the files are going to go ahead and process. Um, and the files have been generated. And if I go back and I look at my AD directory, we'll see that there's a new folder that's created. It's called Processed Files. We open up that, and we'll see that there is an XML file for every one of the MARC files that was in the, the previous directory. And if we go ahead and open that up, we'll see that those files then have been translated um, into EAD records based on the specific um, directions that I gave it um, in the template XSLT um, that we just uh, registered into the application. So that's essentially the process that you could use. If you for some reason didn't want to have um, your MARC records uh, your EAD records in individual XML files. You could go ahead and just process your entire batch uh, MARC file all at once and it would create a single XSLT file with um, multiple EAD records within that single XML file. Um, I don't see many places that process those well um, so I tend to, to recommend um, breaking the file up and processing them as single files but that's really um, for your own environment. So you, you, you have those particular processing steps. Um, the, uh, the biggest difficulty obviously is getting the, the XSLT translation to, um, to match um, the output that you want to have. Um, like I said, the, templates, the template is there. Um, there's some work that needs to be done in order to um, get your particular institution and institutional flavor to EAD. Um, migrated into that XSLT, uh, but once that happens, uh, then you pretty much um, are able to uh, start processing these records on your own. And, um, and that's about it. So if you have questions, um, like always with these videos, uh, if you have questions, you can always feel free to um, contact the Market at List Serve or contact me directly. Okay, thank you.